Hello and welcome back to another episode where I will be using NT Lite to create a customized Windows 7 ISO and this is by far the best program to do that task. We will go through the program step by step, I'll show you how to use it. One thing to note is even if you are the beginner, if you just take it one step at a time, you will see how easy it is to do this task with this particular program especially. So let's get started. First thing you want to do is to acquire an ISO for the operating system that you want to edit. In my case, I'm using Windows 7 Ultimate. In episode 1, I showed you how to download an ISO as well and where to download it from, so feel free to watch that video. Once you get it, simply extract it to a separate folder. If you open it, this is how the extraction folder looks like. This is what's inside it. So, we get to the NT-Lite program. On the left side, there is Add button. I click Image Directory. Then I find the folder where I extracted the ISO and I click select folder. What happens is the program automatically detects what the contents of the ISO are. What exactly, what kind of additions are included. In this case, Home Basic, Home Premium, Professional and the Windows 7 Ultimate version. Which is the one I want to edit. It's the 64-bit edition, so I click on it and I click load. One note before we do that. When you finish using this program, make sure you come back here and unload the image itself because you will not be able to use it with other programs. That's just one note. So we click, we load, and we wait for it to load. Once the image loads, on the left side you will see a bunch of new entries. The way you use this program is you just go from top to bottom, so from start to finish, until you are done. You don't need to skip anything, go up and down, just from the top to bottom. So let's click Components. Every time you open something, you will have an explanation up here, how to use something, what's going on here and there. So let's see what's going on here. We have components, we can remove a bunch of stuff here. So for example, drivers. Here you have a bunch of drivers some hardware support, some other stuff, for example, from the network as well, localization, we can remove some multimedia. You will also see that there is a size for what you're removing. So, for example, I have sample media, which is just sample videos, sample music and pictures that are included with the OS itself. If I remove it, I will be saving 115 megabytes. So it also tells you how much space you are removing. I'm not going to go through each of these as like I've said, there's so many entries here, so many things to look at and almost every single one has the explanation and you can feel free to go through all of these one by one and remove what you don't want or don't need. If you have a question about what you can remove or, or what you should remove or maybe what you don't need at all, feel free to ask online and you will see that there are questions like that already answered. So yeah, once again, just go through all of these and remove what you want. Next, we have features. Here you can actually disable. I don't think this is removing. This is only disabling features. So, for example, you can come here, disable some of the games. You don't have to disable all of them. So, I'll keep Solitaire only because that's the game I like. Then we have some settings. This is very useful. You can browse through these and take a look at what they are. If you select a setting, usually there is an explanation down here to what it is. One thing I would like to show you is, if you watched my previous videos, you know that I want to add my computer icon to the desktop by default, as soon as I install the operating system. Usually you have to click Start, right-click on the computer, Show on Desktop. Well, this program allows you to have that happen by default. So I go to Desktop icon, my computer, and I enable it. There's a drop-down arrow which you click, and then the menu pops up, and you can enable it. So yeah, feel free to browse through all of these once again, one by one, and take a look at what you want to disable, enable, change in any way. Next we have, and the, the reason I'm saying this, go through all of this, is because I can't tell you what to disable. This is your customization. You decide what you want to remove, what you want to change in any way. The only thing you should do is ask online what is safe to remove. Okay, we get the services, so if you don't know what services are, feel free to look online, very simple, you can disable them, enable them, do everything you want here, just as usually as you would in the computer itself. You can actually also right click on each of these and click reset value, which will put them back to the default value. One thing in contrast to previous programs, you do not have preset options here. So that's one, one bad thing. Also, there are extra services, the extension of what we've just seen. 
Next, we can we get to integrational options. We can integrate things in our ISO. So for example, updates, which I talked about in the episode one of my mini series. I'm not gonna integrate any updates because I already have packages which include a bunch of updates that I will burn to a separate disk. To summarize what I've said, if you want to find out more, watch the episode one. We can also integrate drivers, but I don't want to do that because I constantly install the operating system to a different computer, which requires different drivers. So no reason to do that. You can also edit registry. So you can actually right click on the hive, click edit, click OK, and then go through all of these edit registry for the ISO itself. Next, we can automate some things. We have unattended. Unattended, you have to, it's going to be default. You, you, you have to enable it first unattended. You can actually have the computer uh, set some, some things for you without you having to do that. So for example, during the installation, you have the option to activate your system. You can skip that by simply setting this to true. True basically means yes to say so. Next, usually there is an option asking you, do you want to install updates or not? I disable all of that. Also, you can skip the EULA page set your time zone right here if you want to and set a bunch of other things languages all this other stuff this right here by the way is for windows pe which i'm not exactly sure what that means so that's that as well once again if you are interested to, to know exactly what something of the of this means you can usually skip click on it and it tells you what it is or just look online it shouldn't be that hard to find because once again there are so many options i cannot go through all of these it's up to you to go one by one Finally, we have post setup. This is where you can integrate programs, portable programs as well, wallpapers, any kind of documents, music, whatever you want, you can import it here, maybe even executable files, like maybe even bat files, anything like that. So the way you do that is on the upper left corner, you have add button, you click on it, you select what you want to import. I want to add a file, for example, I have an installation of a program. Let's see, there is, for example, Irfan view, which is programmed to view images, I open it, and it's imported. Now there is one thing to mention as well, you have the option to add some parameters parameters, some codes to say so. Basically, these codes or parameters will tell the installer what to do specifically. You can actually make the installer invisible slash silent so you don't see it at all. It, everything gets installed in the background. You don't have to confirm anything. That option exists. To find out what parameters or codes you can type in here, you'll have to look at each program's website and see what codes they provide or allow to be used with their installers. After you install your operating system, there will be a pop-up asking you do you want to install all of these if you haven't set the silent installation, for example. But since I only have three programs, I don't need to set them as a silent installer. I'll have them pop up and I'll simply install them one by one. It's not going to take too long, so that's fine as well. Or you can have them on a separate disk and you can install them like that. It's really up to you how you want to do it. After you're done, after you import whatever you want, you, you take a look at through all of these from top, top to bottom, you ask online what you want to do. Really, this is a process, in my opinion. It takes some time to figure out what to remove, what's not needed, what you can change. It's really up to you. Once you are finished, you get to the apply, which is the finish line, basically. On the left side, we have a couple of options we can choose. How to save the image. You can just save the image as it is. You can save the image and, and trim all the unnecessary additions, which since I am editing Windows 7 Ultimate, this will trim the home edition, the professional, whatever other editions there are. Or there's an option to stop, which I'm not going to use. I click save the image and then you can actually as well remove additions yourself manually by going to remove non-essential additions and you simply select the check marks in front of them. It's really up to you. Next, you have the image format. The next option allows you to apply all these changes to other editions as well if you want to keep them, but I'm, since I don't, I'm not going to do that. And finally, we have options. One option is create ISO, which I click, and then I can actually name my ISO. Custom Windows 7, and I click save. After that, it asks me to give a label. I'll say test, for example, hit OK. And there we go. After you are done, feel free to click process. Once again, when you are finished, go back to source and unload. You can see the button is here. Unload your image 
or maybe it gets unloaded for you automatically if the button is grayed out. That means your image is unloaded. So you are basically free to close this program. Because even if you do close the program without unloading, the image is going to stay loaded. As you can see right now, it's loaded and you won't be able to use this image with any other uh, editing program. So that's about that. Anyways, I'm not going to click process because uh, Pretty much you, you just click process and it goes through all of this and it finishes it and it, that's pretty much it. So that's about it. Hopefully I was able to guide you to the, through the program. Really, it isn't that hard. You have a bunch of options for each of these, by the way, as well up here, as you can see. So feel free to take a look at through all of those. They're just basically pretty similar buttons, as you can see. So that's about it. Really, when in my opinion, the most versatile and complete program for editing Windows 7 images and creating your customized ISO to your liking. It has pretty much all the options you might want as I've seen it. So that's about it. Thank you so much for watching this video. In the next video, I'll show you how to install the customized ISO, what exactly happens, what we removed. We'll, I'll basically give you sort of a rundown what I removed and we'll check if all of those things are removed, what's changed, all of those things. We'll have a list and after that, I will focus on Windows XP, which is my favorite operating system. So that's about it. Thanks so much for tuning in. I will see you guys in upcoming videos. Priest, signing out. Yeah, I feel so old. Can't waste no time, gotta wait in line in the weather so cold. Should have brought my coat at the end of the line, on my shit untold. There's the lot, used to be waiting for something or someone to give me my spot. God only show you the way, it's all up to the plan and the paper and people yeah. you brought. I learned what I thought, I hope that they notice and give us a 